Let's look at positive and negative integers. Our negative integers are the opposite of the whole numbers. So we, could, we have the whole numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. The opposite of those are negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and so forth. So the opposite of 73 is negative 73. The opposite of 91 is negative 91. And that whole set of numbers right here that I've just circled, that goes on and on and on and on and on, are called our negative integers. Our positive integers are those whole numbers greater than 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 67, 38, 402, all of those are positive integers. This would not be a positive integer in that it is not a whole number. If we had like 3 and a half, 3.5, that would not be a positive integer. And this also would not be a positive integer because it has that negative sign. We would actually call that a negative integer. Let's take a look. Our negative integers are the opposite of the whole numbers. So we, could, we have the whole numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. The opposite of those are negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and so forth. So the opposite of 73 is negative 73. The opposite of 91 is negative 91. And that whole set of numbers right here that I've just circled, that goes on and on and on and on and on, are called our negative integers. Oftentimes we look at a number line when we are looking at integers, and so this here is a number line, and I'm going to go ahead and label this number line. We'll go ahead and place 0 on the number line because that is part of our integers. And then in towards the right of 0 will be our positive integers, will be our positives, and will be our positive integers. So we have 1, 2, 3, four, and as you see, there's an arrow here indicating that it goes on and on within that direction. So zero to one, one unit away, two units away from zero, another unit away, three units. Now when we go in this direction, if we only go one unit away, we're getting into our negatives. And at that point, that would be negative one. Then it goes negative two, and if we count down further, it would be negative three, negative four, and so forth. So this is how it is that we make our number line. Again, common mistake, okay, just start at zero. Common mistake would be to start um, <clears throat> counting in the wrong direction and just to mislabel it. Really be careful with putting those negative signs when you're counting your negative numbers. Negatives towards the left, positive integers towards the right, and all of those within the number line are our integers. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. Sometimes we are asked to compare integers, so we could compare negative 3 and negative 1. Negative 3 is right here. Negative 1 is right here. And we know that a number that is towards the right on the number line is actually greater than another number. So negative 1 is greater than negative 3. The way this number sentence is written here, it would have to look like this, where negative 3 is less than negative 1. Negative 3 is towards the left of negative 1. So that does make sense. Just as if we were to look at another number sentence, if we looked at 2 and we looked at negative 2, if we looked at 2 and we looked at negative 2, it would be... 2 is to the right of negative 2, 2 is greater than negative 2, and the way we write that is like that there. 2 is greater than negative 2. So when you are comparing integers, sometimes it will help you to draw that number line to really think, hey, which number is smaller 
or which number is bigger than another. Where does it appear on that number line? So that you can compare those integers as well. Oftentimes when working with integers, you will be asked to identify points, the integer for the point on the number line. And then so if we were to look at this number line and to identify that integer that corresponds it, a is at, look at it here, a is at 1, b is at negative 3, c is at 3, and d is at negative 1. Now you look at this and you're all, well, wow, I can do that. That looks really easy. What happens here is they start adjusting these values here where they do not label the whole thing very nicely for you or they might um, change the interval. And then let me show you what that means. If we take a look at this number line here, we see that the interval, and that's the distance in between each of those marks there, is two units. It goes two, four, six. So in the negative direction, it also goes two away from each other. Negative two, then negative four, then it would be negative six. It says, which point shows negative five? Think in your head which point you think shows negative 5. You might make that most common mistake, especially if you don't take those steps to label. And then so this is the type of approach that I would take for this type of problem here. I would finish labeling the number line. I know each of these is two apart from each other, so halfway in between those is 1. Goes 1, 2, then 3, 4, 5, then 6. And the negative direction, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And then when I look at those questions now, it is very easy to answer them. It says, which point shows negative 5? That would be point C. What is the integer for point B? It would be negative 3. So again, take those steps that you need to you know that negative 5 is actually even smaller than negative 4. That could be another way for you to think as to where it is that um, and what point negative 5 would be or what the integer for point B would be. So when you're comparing those different places on those number lines. But really just take that extra step so that you show your understanding of positive and negative integers. Alright, let's go ahead and review. I want you to go ahead and point at all the negative integers. Point at all the negative integers. Hopefully you're pointing at 1, 2, and 3. Those are our negative integers, and I'll abbreviate just a little bit. Go ahead and point at all of our positive integers. that are on the screen. Hopefully you're pointing at 1, 2, and 5. Those are positive integers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, etc. First ones I said were the positive integers and the other ones I said were the negative integers. Does our integers and do those integers include 0? Answer to that is yes. So our whole set does include 0 as well. So again, we can end up using a number line. We could end up comparing these. And we can end up ordering them as well. And so this is our whole set of those things called integers. What's smaller, negative 5 or negative 8? What's smaller? negative 5 or negative 8? Ideally you said negative 8. What sign would we put in there then? Would we say that negative 5 is greater than negative 8 or negative 5 is less than negative 8? Negative 5 is greater than negative 8. So if you read that in the reverse, when I asked you what's smaller, negative 8 is smaller, negative 8 is less than negative 5. So we can compare those as well. And so those are your R integers. We can compare them, we can even place them on a number line and identify those points. There are many things that we can do with these integers.